Hey friends, welcome back to the YouTube channel. My name is Bond, this is Oleg, and in today's video we're gonna review a German watch. In today's video we're not only reviewing a German watch, we're also reviewing what in my opinion is a true watch enthusiast's watch. There's so many cool little things going on in this $2,000 Flieger chronograph that I think pretty much only watch enthusiasts would appreciate. And the first thing we should talk about are the case dimensions. So the watch has a diameter of 40 millimeters. It's about 45 millimeters from one lug to another. It has a 20 millimeter lug width and it's about 14 millimeters thick. When you look at the watch on its own without it being on the wrist, it looks chunkier than it actually is. It looks chunkier than 14 millimeters diameter would suggest. And I think it's all due to the diameter of 40 millimeters. It's not a lot for a Flieger watch. So this one is really for people with smaller wrists or for people who prefer smaller watches. On the wrist, the thickness doesn't really show. In fact, it's a very comfortable watch to wear on the wrist. I'm a big fan of this supplied leather strap. More often than not, when the leather strap is included with the watch, I recommend you replace it because I rarely find an included leather strap to be comfortable. This one is very comfortable. It's a very good quality leather strap and it fits the aesthetic of the watch really well. And the aesthetic that I'm talking about is of course this German minimalistic, no nonsense type of design. To show you what I'm talking about, let's take a look at the case design, for example. So the case design is very minimalistic. It's very unassuming at a first glance. However, the case material is ice hardened steel, which is more scratch resistance, which is tougher than your regular stainless steel case. It is also executed with a sandblasted finish, so it looks very utilitarian and it also looks very straightforward. It looks like a watch that was built for a specific purpose. And that purpose is to be a tough, super legible, no nonsense type of timepiece. And I think every part of this watch, including this ice hardened steel case speaks to that. Let's take a look at the dial again, very clear monotone dial. You just have black and white. Even though it's a chronograph, it's super easy to read. At first glance, you can tell exactly what time it is. Nothing is in the way. You have your register by the nine o'clock position. That's the seconds hand. Then you have your register by the 12 o'clock position. That's the minutes for the chronograph. The register by the six o'clock position. That's the hours for the chronograph. And to balance out the dial, you have the Masco logo by the three o'clock position. Right below that, you have day and date. I personally would prefer this watch without the day date functionality on the dial. I think it makes the chronograph a little bit overly busy. On this watch, it's not too bad, but I would still prefer no cutouts for day and date. Uh, without it, I think the dial would be a little cleaner. The dial is loomed and the loom is pretty good, but it is disappointing to me personally. When I see a Flieger watch, I want all of the Arabic numerals to be loomed. I want that loom to pop and to really have this bright over the top uh, type of loom in a dark environment. With this watch, it's a bit of a missed opportunity. I'm not gonna say it's a full negative, it's more of an oversight on Damascus part. What isn't a disappointment is all the engineering that they actually put into this watch. So if you look at the pushers, for example, right, you have your standard pusher at the two o'clock position, you have your standard pusher at the four o'clock position, then you have your sign crown at the three o'clock position, nothing really special there. The special magic is actually going on behind the scenes. So Damasco uses their patented push button system. I had to look a lot of this up and I can barely understand how it works but basically you can operate the crown and the chronograph pushers underwater. Yes, you've heard that right. You can operate the crown and the chronograph pushers underwater. This is the first chronograph I ever see where you can actually use the chronograph function underwater. Super impressive, I would say over engineering from a family owned watch company really happy to see this type of innovation in a watch for under $2,000. Even though you can operate the crown underwater, it is still a screw down crown and the case back is also screwed down. So this watch has 100 meters of water resistance with the amount of engineering and the type of case that is used and just the way this watch feels on your wrist, I would be very confident taking this watch into the water and going for a swim with it. I think this one can handle it no problem. 
The only thing you should do probably is to change the strap from a leather strap to something like a NATO, or you could use one of their in-house bracelets. The watch is powered by the Velju 7750 Chrome Graph movement. It of course has 25 joules, beats at 28,800 vibrations per hour, and has 48 hours of power reserve. I think the Masco actually did some extra engineering on this movement. I don't know that for a fact, but for example, when you change the day or when you change the date, in the movement, it has that very satisfying click. It goes chick, chick, chick. I don't remember Velju movements feeling that smooth. So maybe they did do some tinkering with the movement to make it a little bit more tough and more robust. That's not to say that the movement isn't tough or robust already. The only negative with this movement is of course that it's a bit chunky, which makes the watch chunkier. There is a lot to like about this watch. I think it presents excellent value for money. It's one of those hidden gems, one of those watches that nobody seems to be reviewing, but watch enthusiasts seem to know about and seem to appreciate. Um, some oversights like the lack of loom, I think fully loom dial would be a killer on this watch. And another kind of a smaller, very subjective, I guess, negative that I would have for this watch. It doesn't seem special enough. Yes, it has all these over-engineered uh, cool things going on and the case feels really good. And the watch, it just in your hands, it feels very good quality. Uh, it feels like you're holding something that's gonna last you a long time. All those things are great. All the internal things are great. However, looks wise, it's not original enough, in my opinion, at least. I think there are quite a few other Flieger chronograph watches that look very similar to this. So the Masco is not really standing out with their marketing approach, uh, should I say. I see the Masco as a brand and this watch specifically to be tailored towards the watch enthusiast who already owned a few of their dream or grail watches. They already experienced the IWC, the Rolex, the Omega, and now they're ready for something different, something special, something that offers killer value for money. This focus on watch enthusiasts over general public is actually a great thing for watch enthusiasts, but maybe not necessarily for making the most money and having kind of the best well-known name. So I think for the near future, the Masco is kind of bound to stay this cool underground watch enthusiast brand and I'm really excited to see what other watches they come up with in the future. They have their in-house movement. They have some really cool one hour chronographs. If you're interested in seeing those reviews, please leave your comments in the comment section below. Let me know what other Damasco watches you'd like to see reviewed on this YouTube channel. Also, huge thank you to Russell Jewelers. They're a local Damasco dealer. They're actually the only dealer in Canada, I think. So if you are in Canada and you're looking at one of these watches, check out their website. I will leave a link in the description below. Great family owned business, just like Damasco. So thanks for watching this review. Really appreciate it. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. That helps out quite a bit. By the way, today on my wrist, I'm wearing my Zelos Horizons Diver Watch. I did a full review of this watch. That video can be found on the YouTube channel. I will also leave it linked in the description below. Also in the description below, there are a couple of other links. There is a secret link and there is a link to bondaystraps.com. Check it out if you're interested. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope you had fun and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Oh, you did so well. You did so well. Oh, you're heavy as hell. Okay.